Hey guys, what's going on? It's Vespa Man Zero again. Today I'm here with an RX 480 all-in-one water cooling mod. I'll be attaching an Arctic Acceleral Hybrid 3 to the uh, RX 480 stock variant the reference card. Today I got the XFX brand RX 480 Black Edition. This one comes with the with the core clock of 1328 megahertz over the regular clock of 1266 megahertz. It's also the one that comes with the shiny and pretty back plate. Okay, as you can see, of course, this is the reference card, reference PCB. You have the back plate that actually extends along further than the PCB here, and that actually allows the intake fan to, uh, to pull air while it's inside the case and, of course, scoot it out the back. The problem that I have had with this card and a lot of people have had with this card is that it does tend to overheat with the reference model and even some of the aftermarket models. Um, most of the time in order for me to hold that 1328 megahertz core clock I had to take my fan profiles and boost it up to the point where it's really it's, it's, un, it's not a pleasure to listen to. It gets, becomes way too audible even inside the case um, which is a problem in most blower style fan cards um, even of course in previous AMD cards like the like the R9 290s which are notorious for overheating and being really loud in the room. Right now <clears throat> I'm actually running a Fury X um, which is actually what's powering this display here right now. I have the i7 6700K 16 gigabytes of 3400 megahertz Trident skill excuse me G skill Trident Z memory running on the Asus Maximus V3 Gene motherboard. Um, as you can see as you can see, the Arctic Acceleral Hybrid 3 has a 120 millimeter radiator, so I'll be attaching this 120 millimeter fan um, to it. What's going to make this modification a little bit different than most is I'm actually going to attempt to use a Dremel to cut out a small section on the on the shroud here, so that I can actually place the shroud back on and use the original fan. Alright, so to do a comparison, because I want to see how close the current AMD flagship will actually do against the previous AMD flagship. Unfortunately, when the RX 480 came out, we never got a 490 thus far. Um, the performance is really mid-tier. The Fury X sometimes hangs in with the 1070 actually, and is a pretty good card for DirectX 12 and Vulcan titles. The RX 480 holds its own weight, especially against cards like the 1060, maybe previous generation NVIDIA 980. Of course, not the 980 Ti, not the current 1070, or the current 1080. Um, hopefully, we can get a good enough overclock past the 1328 core clock in order to maybe get a decent score that should compare with the Fury X. Like, most likely, it won't, but we'll see just how far we can push the card with better cooling. So for the benchmarks here, we'll be using 3D Mark. We'll be using the Time Spy test, which is DirectX 12 test. We'll be using Fire Strike and Fire Strike Extreme to see just how close. The RX 480 overclock now on liquid will compare to the stock megahertz, 1050 megahertz on the, uh, on the R9 Fury X. So for this test, I will be doing the default fan profile okay, for the Fury X as well as for the uh, PC, the CPU fan. Um, I shouldn't need any additional cooling. I don't think that's going to hold my score back at all. Um, I won't be running this Fury X overclocked at all. Right now, just running idle with just the, uh, of course, I got my AMD drivers up and with the 3D Mark program open. It's pretty much inaudible. Um, we'll see exactly how loud it gets. I may not be able to get you an actual decibel rating, but I'll give you a common sense rating. So we'll start off with the 3D Mark Time Spy DirectX 12 benchmark. So we're going into the graphics test on Time Spy. Right now it's doing about 32 FPS. Uh, CPU is running at 41 Celsius, 13% load, 8% load is not really important. It's more of a GPU test than anything. The GPU is running at 48 Celsius at 100% usage right now, steadily holding the 1050 megahertz that it's rated to hold. Memory is going at 500 megahertz, of course, what it's rated to hold. Um, Still pretty much inaudible, not hearing much. We'll see if the fans decide to kick up as the temperature raises in just a moment here. Um, and then I'll, I'll see if we got any more noise at all. 
But right now we're just holding a steady 50 Celsius. Um, of course, it's still running, like I said, rated megahertz, rated memory clock speed. Yep, so maybe that's a little bit louder, but like I said, I mean, it's, it's maintaining the low 50s. We're at 51 right now. So if it doesn't shoot up too much higher, it'll stay pretty quiet. And usually in your games, I mean, this is actually made to push everything to its limits. So usually in your games, you're not going to have to run things at a higher, uh, at a, with a higher fan curve anyway. I usually run mine stock with the stock fan curve. It runs just fine. Every once in a while, it'll kick up a little bit higher during a long gaming session. Uh, actually, I usually run two Fury X's as well, and uh, things turn out pretty well. It works pretty well. I don't really have to worry about my computer being too loud, uh, which is a huge problem. I had one I, when I did purchase the RX 480 which actually led me to buying the Fury X in the first place. So, our Fury X never broke 51 degrees Celsius. It never went under the 1050 megahertz. Of course, there's not going to be any thermal throttling at all on that car. In the drivers, it'll allow the temperature of that car to get up to 75 degrees. Uh, when I was running the RX 480, when I first got the car doing these tests, um, often, even during gameplay, playing games like Doom, using, uh, using Vulcan even, it would get up to temperatures getting close to 90 degrees. But I am in a micro ATX case, so we ended up with a time spot score of 5,227. And of course, there's no overclock. The graphic score, let's see here, 5,246 for the graphic score. Alright, we'll go into the Fire Strike test. Gonna not include the demo on that one. We'll be here forever. And now going on a fire strike, seeing if that's able to push the card any further. So we're on the second stage of the fire strike test here. We're running a good 40, still 48 Celsius, 100% load, 1050 megahertz, 500 megahertz on the memory clock. Uh, CPU running at about 46 Celsius right now. Uh, during the last time spy test, I kind of saw a kick up towards the high, 60, high 60s. We're running it at the four, it boost up to 4.2 um, gigahertz, so I'm not doing anything too crazy with the CPU, which unfortunately is going to hold the benchmark a little bit back. But with that being said, um, I'm going to maintain that for both tests, so I'm not going to run one test overclock, the other test not overclock. All right, so we got a total fire strike score of 12,704, a graphic score of 16,321. So that is the score that we want to see how close we can get to when we get finished with the RX 480 mod and overclocking. All right, so now we've swapped in the RX 480 graphics card. I'm gonna have MSI Afterburner run it up here. Now it is supposed to. According to Afterburner and according to Wattman, it's supposed to go to 1328 megahertz. That is the rated core clock of the graphics card. I'm going to run everything stock. I'm not going to change any fan, change any fan profiles. I'm not going to change anything to Wattman. I'm not going to change any power limits. Nothing of that nature. I'm just going to go ahead and run it like it is. It's running at 48 Celsius idle, so which is a few Celsius degrees higher than what the RX, well, what the R9 Fury X was running idle, actually quite a bit higher. The R9 Fury X was running at like 36 degrees, 37 degrees idle, and only got up to 51 Celsius under load. So we're going to see how far this thing decides to push. This is just the stock reference version of the card. Of course, tune my X effects to go up to 1328 core clock, um, but we'll see how well that actually runs, um, how well that actually turns out. So first, we're going to start off with 3D Mark Time Spy. As you can see here, 1257 megahertz, 1267. Um, I mean, this is close to the regular stock 1266. It's not at all getting close. That may be due to power limits. So I'm going to toggle with that, and we'll see how well it does there, and we'll see what it takes to actually overclock this car. But I'm all the way up to 73 degrees Celsius right now, and this thing is not uh, does not sound good. Um, with 73 is acceptable. It's fine. I think this car is ready to go all the way up to 90 degrees, but listen to how loud it already is. I mean, of course the memory is running at what it's ready to run at. So the fan apparently is up to 3,762 RPMs, 
78, 78% of its usage already. Um, it just dropped back down another thousand in between the test here. But that's, that's going to be a problem if we're not able to keep it cool enough when we try to get it just to the stock 1328, which is the issue that I ran into with the car to begin with, which is why I'm doing this mod in the first place. Because it, it can't even hold the 1328 without turning the fan profile up to a ridiculous, ridiculous uh, speed. Alright, so we now have a score of 4,136 with a graphic score of 4,018. Uh, the car didn't run as well as it's supposed to. I never hit the 1328 at any point, didn't even really come that close. So I'm going to play with the power limits of the car, and I'm going to play with the fan profile as well as the, uh, as well as the temperature target. See if I can raise that up to 90 degrees and see just how close we can get it to run at that 1328. And then we'll see if there's any room at all, if at all, to overclock before I can put this on, before I can put this hybrid cooler onto the car. Right, so let me go into Wattman here. I'm going to take my power limit and put it up 20%. Right, so power limits up 20%. Temperature target sits with a max of 90 and a target of 80, which means that when it gets close to 80, it's going to start the throttle. Um, during those tests, we were seeing the high 70s on temperature. So I'm going to raise that up to 90 as well. And let's see here, acoustic limit. We're not going to do an acoustic limit. And we'll see if raising the power limit is going to make any real difference to the car. So, I've modified the uh, Wattman profile to try to see if I can keep it at 1328. I've taken the power limit, increased it to 30%. I've also taken the temperature target, which was previously set to 80, which means that it's going to start to ramp up those fan speeds, as well as possibly down clock the, uh, the core clock of the card in order to keep within the temperature range that it sets for itself. Now, it has a max of 90, but I'm also going to range that, put that target up to 90 increase the power limit and I'm also going to increase the uh, fans ability to kick up its speed a bit here. I'm going to set the minimum up to somewhere about 2500. I'm going to set the minimum to and we'll see if the fan is able to keep things within a decent audible range which uh, I'm sure it won't be able to um, but let's see if we can at least hit that 1328. I'm not going to set it I'm not going to force it to across the board because you shouldn't have to run even even though I'm doing benchmarks here, I'm trying to give like a realistic um, use case here. You shouldn't have to run with all your power states locked across at 1328 just to get your car to do what it says it's supposed to do on the box. So we're going to go ahead and try the uh, time spy again and see if we're able to keep it where it's supposed to be at 1328 now that we've increased the power limit and fan curve. So <clears throat> now we're holding the 1328 megahertz. Uh, hopefully with the increased power limit, it will actually be able to maintain that during the during the entirety of the test. As you can see, the fans are already kicking up though to compensate. We're at 76 degrees Celsius here, which isn't bad. We can go up to 90, and now with the temperature target being raised up to 90, I don't believe that it'll throttle itself down. But I mean, this is not, I would never play my, any of my games with the fan blowing this loud, especially since the way my desk setup is. The, the, the computer actually sits on my desk, it would be obnoxiously loud. It's obnoxiously loud just in this room. So we are, we're up to 78 degrees here. Fan spinning at 4,800 RPMs at 88% of its full speed. And we're at 77 Celsius. But it did hold the 1328, what it was rated to hold that time. I uh, took a little bit of play with the power limit to get that to happen and the temperature target to get that to happen, which is essentially what happened when I first purchased the car is what I figured out. So hopefully before this test is over we'll max out at around 77 and we won't get up to 80. Alright, so we actually got a score a little bit better than before, 4,290 with a graphics score of 4,194. 
Uh, it did maintain the 1328, so that's the difference in really about 50, I'm not going to do the math, but about 50 megahertz difference total, um, 60 megahertz difference. Uh, so we did get a little bit of a difference. Of course, that's still not coming close to our Fury X, which is why we are going to take this thing apart and attach this water block. I'm kind of afraid to even try to overclock it any further, honestly. Uh, we were already kind of reaching the limits of what the car is going to do before it's screaming in my face. Uh, we reached 88% on the fan curve. So we'll go from here straight to trying to attach this water block and hopefully being able to attach the reference shroud onto the card and making sort of like a hybrid card with it. Before we get to that though, we will do one more fire strike test and see how it holds up through the fire strike test. I'm expecting and hoping that we're going to be able to maintain that 1328 megahertz, but we'll see what actually happens. So already on Fire Strike, we're dropping to the low 1300s. There we go. Now my fan curve's up. Now it's up to 1328, but fan curve is absolutely ridiculously loud. And we're kind of dancing around between 1315 and 1328 now. Alright, so in graphics success 2, we're starting out at the 1328 rated megahertz. We'll see if it drops at all when the temperature begins to rise, if the fan curve is able to keep up. And we're up to 77 degrees. Fans at the 4,800 RPMs again, uh, but at least it's holding the 1328. Alright, so we're finished here with Fire Strike. We got a total score of 10,297 with a graphics score of 13,371. Uh, it kind of struggled to hold that 1328 megahertz though, especially on the first half of the graphics test. Uh, once we get this water block on, that should be fairly easy. We at least won't be running into anything as far as temperature problems. So. As long as we're not running into temperature, the rest of the problems are going to be due to the, uh, the power target, which, I mean, we can change that up to 50% if we need to. Alright, so I'll be starting by taking off the back plate here. Uh, maybe there will be some screw-ups, maybe there won't be some screw-ups. Uh, this is actually my first time taking the GPU apart, and I'm going with the gusto here. I'm going to try to go ahead and attach this and get the shroud reattached. So I'll start out by taking off the back plate. 